we've got the rad runner rear wheel uh, this is one of the more bizarre things i've ever seen on a bike it's a completely non-standard cassette fusion freewheel at first we thought this was a cassette because it had a lock ring that was holding this stack of gears on and as you can see that's just sort of on the outside and at first glance there isn't any splines visible inside the edge of the freewheel however after we took this apart and looked closer see way down inside of here there is a spline to match the freewheel tool the problem with that is the spline the freewheel tool has a maximum internal diameter of 19.8 millimeters and this nut right here has a minimum clearance of 20.4 millimeters so there would be no way short of cutting this cable and removing this stack of hardware to access the splines that are inside of here with the freewheel tool there may be some sort of custom freewheel tool that rad has developed or the company that made this ridiculous piece of equipment so supplied that would be slotted that you could go over this cable and get in to the splines with and remove it but I don't have that tool and I even theorized that that tool would likely collapse during the job because of the amount of force it takes to get one of these off when they're threaded on tightly. So I'm going to take this motor cover off and see if I can separate it from the electric motor inside and then move this whole assembly over to my bench, get the freewheel tool inside of there and somehow adapt something to this to try and apply that force. So it's going to get complicated. But we'll see how it goes. Uh, you should note that you need a security bit. The bit with the little tiny hole in it. Because they put security screws on this. screws off generally this is kind of a snug fit here so you might have to tap the axle on the other side with a hammer I like to use the park tool hammer with the plastic end whenever i'm doing something like this ah uh, oh, yes i can remove that interestingly enough that stack of hardware will also not go through bearing in here maybe that bearing's not in too tight. I don't really want to force on this cable. Looks like that bearing might have moved already a little. Let's see if I can't tap that bearing out. Yeah, the bearing's going to come out. Get on the lip and give it a push. All right, so what I'm doing here, I've got a little punch tool, and I'm tapping on the inner edge of this bearing, being careful not to mess up the cable or the or the bearing or the seal there it is so tap that off now i can still can't remove this wow oh because of the seal mm -hmm. that seal looks like it goes outward not inward all right so i got that to go through there and damaged it so i'm gonna have to go buy another seal it's not a huge deal seal's pretty easy to come by but I wanted it to go the other way, so I'm just going to cut this seal off. Cleared your part. Hey, look at that. We finally got that off the bike. Now, to get this off, I'm going to need to use a freewheel removal tool. And that does lock into place, so good luck to me getting this all off of here. Might try and find another motor I can bolt this hub to. Just so happened to have a fat bike wheel laying around. Has a proper plug on it. We went ahead and bolted the flange from the rad wheel. And now we're going to use the freewheel tool locked in in the vise to get this off of here. It's locked in. Slide this in here. Now we've got to lock the vise in place, and then give it some force, and it comes off. Yeah, luckily this old wheel's got a seal in it. I can 
take off and put back on this side when I reassemble this wheel. So I realized most home mechanics probably won't have that laying around. I was thinking of another adaptation I could have done was I could have shot screws through this flange into this board and then mounted it in my vise and then used a wrench on the tool that I used, the free wheel removal tool, to take off the cassette, or I'm sorry, the free wheel. But this has been one heck of an experience just to change a freewheel on a rad. I know they do make those slotted tools, but the amount of force you have to apply on a freewheel that's been on for a long time, I, I would theorize that that would likely, that tool would likely just collapse on itself and not actually get the freewheel off. I didn't have that tool handy. I do have a huge collection of removal tools, cassette and freewheel and likewise. So I just went ahead and came up with a process that would work for me. So now I can go ahead and reassemble the wheel. I went ahead and tap this bearing back in. That's all seated. I can put this hub motor back together. Before I do that, I'm gonna put this seal in, I think. So unfortunately, the only way I could figure out how to do this is this seal doesn't fit over any of this this stuff here. So unfortunately, the only way I could figure out how to do this is cut this. I'm probably gonna put a little silicone in there when I reassemble it, something to keep it watertight. That is uh, not ideal to have a loose seal. The seal does fit in here quite nicely. Definitely wouldn't recommend cutting seals, but this is, again, we're trying to do this job. And this is the only way I could really figure out how to get this done. So when I uh, do a final assembly, I'll probably add just a tab of silicone just to make sure that that, that seal, actually the seal is pretty good. I might just let that ride. I, don't, I can't even see where I trimmed it, so I'm gonna go ahead and let that go. These bolts back in, get a new freewheel on, and we're good to go. All right, I uh, went ahead and just put a small amount of sealant on the outside of that seal and got a little in the crack. Uh, ideally, I would have preferred not to cut the seal, but that was the only way that I was gonna get it back on, and you don't want water getting in there. Uh, I got it in there, I'm pretty sure it's gonna be watertight, and now I can go ahead and install a new freewheel. Finally get down to this stage. <laughs> I'm gonna pre-fit this on the bike and make sure it's all gonna line up properly because that to me looks like a large gap and that looks like narrow clearance for a chain. So I may have to pull this back off and put uh, a small spacer behind there. I think their assembly stood off the bike quite a bit more. Well, let's go ahead and fit this to the bike and see how it goes. So I've got it fit to the bike and automatically I can see there's a huge gap here and the derailleur's first gear resting position is a bit over to the outside of the bike from where I where it should be. I'm gonna have to go ahead and pull that back off, put a little uh, maybe like a two millimeter spacer behind it and then move on. 